What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic, and this is a second look at Sausage Party. Obviously, I'm doing this because Amazon has a TV show called Sausage Party Foodtopia currently now with some of the original voice cast. So I wanted to revisit the original movie, which was a big hit back in the day because everybody was like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> and um, obviously, this, this is not a review of the show. You can click on the review of the show if you want to review the show. This is a review of the movie because I, I was intrigued enough to want to go back um, and check out the movie. I think I want to say this is the third time. I think I saw the movie twice. Uh, first time I loved it. First time out of the gate. Hilarious. Uh, there's at least one, I would say, homophobic joke, uh, in the film, in the movie that made me cringe. But for the most part, a lot of the wordplay is funny. Uh, a lot of what they did, it's, it's creative. It's, it's, it's exactly what I feel like Seth Rogen does. Like I, the, you know, I, I, someone made a comment once about how he sits down on, at a lot on, he has he had a lot on the studio or whatever, like an office on on a lot on the studio. And um, it always smelled like weed. I feel like somewhere in that room full of weed, he came up with Sausage Party. You know, like they were, him and his friends, like Evan Goldberg and them, they just were like, what if food was sentient? Uh, what? Like, the thing that I'm eating right now, what if it could, like, feel pain? So then they made that movie. Anyway, um, this has audio description on Netflix. Uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's all right. I didn't, it is what it is, audio description. And we'll talk about it. Anyway, uh, I do want to say for my blind audience that I've got a Fast and Furious shirt on. I have black sunglasses and I have a black hat on. Back, it's a baseball cap facing backwards. Um, so there you go. That's my visual introduction for the day. Um, I like this movie less and less the more that I watch it. It may also be the fact that I'm like blitzing myself with the Sausage Party TV series in addition to the fact of watching a Sausage Party movie and I was just like, this is a lot of Sausage Party. But, um, yeah, I mean... They play with stereotypes and assign foods, different things. There's like the whole thing between the bagel and the, what is the other guy? Uh, falafel. I don't know what he is. Uh, something like that. Um, uh, which in, in this day and age plays very differently. Uh, is However, is referenced in the series. There's a lot of characters... Uh, there are a lot of characters in this that they don't reference in the series and a lot of things that happen. Um, I totally forgot about the douche for some reason. I like, I remembered that there were things that were not food that were sentient and I was looking for those to become like, where is the, you know, cause uh, I, I watched this after watching some of the episodes of Foodtopia and then I watched this again, and I was like, there's some things that I remember, but what, there, there was a, I think there was a condom that was, like, crying for help, like a used condom. Uh, but, yeah, um, it's, a, it's one of those films where you can't take too seriously. Like, the gum is in a wheelchair, and, like, if you ask the question of, like, how did it get a tiny wheelchair, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? It's, <laughs> it's like chewed gum in a wheelchair. It's, where did it get the wheelchair? From where? Where's the tiny wheelchair and who is it made for? You know? Um, but, yeah, it's, it is, it's fine. It's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a one-time watch. Sauce is probably the one-time watch. It's, the opening song is cool. The Great Beyond, um, is, it's a funny song. And uh, there are funny lines throughout uh, the, you know, stereotypically uh, indigenous character in this film makes a reference later on. He's like, we, we wrote the song, but there was something in there about uh, getting rid of juice. I like juice, you know, like, and obviously they're, because juice sounds like something else. 
So they're, um, you know, they find ways of, of wordplay and commentary on things. And uh, it's, but like rewatchability, this movie actually doesn't have that for me. So a lot of times I come in here with my second looks and I'm like, oh, this is a film I can watch over and over. And I take it, I take it to Desert Island and I love it. And I just, Sausage Party is a film that, like, the more I watch it, the less funny it gets. And I'm like, okay, well, it's clever. I'm never going to take that away from it. I think it's clever. I still think it's clever. And I still think, in terms of, like, an original concept, clever. Um, but I, now that I'm on, on, like, my third time watching it, I'm, like, less excited. And the funny thing is, like, I'm like I own this somewhere on DVD. I'm probably never going to watch this movie again. Um... Audio description didn't really impress me that much. It kind of dips out for long periods of time. I know there's a lot of audio description here. I mean, there's a lot of dialogue, but um, there's a lot that happens physically in this. Like I, I visually had seen this twice, and uh, yeah, I like I, I remember what these characters look like, and and I don't feel like the audio description represents the film very well to be totally honest. Actually, I got kind of like viscerally angry at the beginning of one character's entrance because um, they described the douche as like a bell-shaped uh, object instead of saying what he is. Now, later on, they call him douche. I was like, if they avoid calling him and saying the word douche the entire film, we're going to have a problem because like he says it uh, but I, uh, I would have been okay with feminine hygiene product, but like a bell shaped thing felt like you didn't want anybody to notice what he was. Like you, you were like, no, no, but it's kind of obvious what he is. Uh, and that's why he's voiced the way he is and acts the way he is, is because everything like the whole thing works so when you describe it as an object like that to somebody who can't see and has never seen the character design for this character and doesn't understand it's almost like you're you're keeping that a secret from blind people but it's not really a secret to sighted people uh a bell-shaped object is going to be like what especially to people who don't use one of those now if you say feminine hygiene products <laughs> We can get a much closer uh, reference to what it may or may not be and then draw a better conclusion. But in the meantime, it just sounds like this guy's an asshole and he's shaped like a bell. What is he shaped like a bell? What, what else could he be? What could be shaped like a bell? You know, and you're like, you're trying to figure that out. And I just think that's unfair for anybody who's watching this who's blind for the first time. Anybody who's like, ooh, Futopia. I never did see the movie. Maybe I'll watch it. Oh, it's on Netflix. Oh, let me watch that. Um, so, yeah. And it, like I said, if I feel like it disappears sometimes for way too long. It comes in. It's got some stuff. It does. It's not absent. You're not watching it without. But it, this is definitely not the strongest audio description track that I've heard. It's just kind of like a... I, I, honestly, I'm going to say below average. Um, I wasn't very impressed with it because I've actually seen the movie. Uh, and I was trying to think about like, what does it do? How does it close the gap? And I'm like, I think you're missing a lot of the film. Um, it, I, I don't think you knew what every product was. Uh, it doesn't really m let you in on every single joke that way. Uh, so that you understand because the, the food all have names. So instead of, you have to kind of like explain what everything is in order for all of the jokes to work. So, uh, if you don't do that, then it's, yeah, the, it's a lot of the jokes don't work. Um, the food sex in here is described. I would say the people who did the TV show describe it in more graphic detail, also the TV show goes further because they didn't have to get an NPAAR rating. So there's, it's twofold. 
uh, not only do I feel like the audio description for the TV show went further, but the show goes further. So, um, yeah, food sex, if you've never seen this movie, they food have sex. Um, but one thing that this movie, this rewatch made me miss is Sam Hayek, who does not return for the series as the taco. And, um, I thought she was, she was good in this. Uh, as a nice character and she was fun and I I immediately I was like something's missing here <laughs> when I started watching the series I was like something is missing in this show it's been a minute since I've seen Sasha's Party and the one character that immediately came back to me was Salma Hayek's Taco and I looked up on the cast list for the show and I was like oh she's not here oh damn but you you know so it's a, a deep voice cast otherwise. So tons of people voiced in this all over the place, even like in little roles. So um, have fun with it. Uh, everybody kind of has their own different story. It's clever. I would say definitely Sausage Potter is worth it for is worth a one time watch. If you're blind, I'm sorry. The audio description is just, you know, it is what it is. I know there's a lot of dialogue here, but this is such a uniquely inventive film and very specific with a lot of the jokes a lot of it is very visual into in that you have to know what something is in order for it to really be funny some of it comes through i think like the stuff with the baby carrots uh comes through when they're like not the children you know because <laughs> they're baby carrots um yeah so anyway um this is not for kids. I think it goes without saying, but uh, I think people see animation and they're like, oh, kids. I, I hope everybody remembers that Sausage Party is just not for kids. Anyway, uh, that's that's it. That's my like last thought. Um, you can check out my thoughts on the on the series. I don't really just... I don't want to like come down too hard on it because I'm deflated a little bit. The audio description wasn't great and this is my third time watching the film, so... I want to be able to say also kind of how, how I liked it the first time around because I think this is a film you can watch once and like it. I just don't know this is a film that you can watch 20 times and like it. I don't know that this is a film that has a ton of rewatchability to it because um, I'm liking it less and less with every time I watch it. So I'm going to go back to my original feeling and try to liven up myself and inject myself with, <laughs> with a little bit of that. How did that feel the first time? How did this film make me feel way back in the day? Um, and we're going to go with, I'm going to give Sausage Party a B plus. Uh, it's, it's clever enough. Uh, and um, I, I, the, the, that may have been higher. I don't know. I Honestly, I don't know. I didn't go back and look at my grade. I try not to do that. I try to stay in the moment. But I do remember liking this film way more on the first viewing and laughing my ass off in the theater. And now I'm just like, mm, I don't know, man, you know? <laughs> so that's it. Uh, it's like, it's on Netflix right now. If you want to watch it, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will see you guys on the other side.